2019, it is the Moortown Select Board. Uh, looks like we have a third board. Um, things, we're going to switch things around just a little bit. Um, instead of general public comment to start, actually we're going to go into executive session to start. I got something for about five minutes uh, with Montgomery Timber um, that we need to take care of as a group here. I think it would be better if we did that and then we can transition into um, uh, general public comment. <laughs> and if we could also sing for, for Ray, it's his birthday. <laughs> so, happy birthday. for everybody here at the table and all our people out in the audience while we're at executive session. That's all right. So I'd uh, move to go into executive session for the reason of... Um, our confidential attorney, client communications made for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the body. Second? Yeah. Second. Thank you. All in favor of the all right. Aye. 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 Thank you. So we'll only be, we'll be very short. Thank you. Um, so, so I did tell the board earlier uh, that I'm going to really try to keep things on the, to agenda tonight because I need to leave sort of like uh, at seven myself. I have uh, a meeting three hours south of here that I need to get here and get to tonight. <clears throat> Meetings in the morning. So um, let's go ahead and go with general public comments if there is any. That's it, Dr. Lewis. Yep. I just have a couple of questions about the um, town hall liability insurance. Okay. And I was just wondering if there was an easier, um, easier way to make getting the insurance other than having the rancher mm. do it. <laughs> That question came up actually at the last the last meeting we had. Oh, did it? Okay. Um, I know the library and other people with it. It really happened with all of the vendors that we use have to provide liability insurance. Um, so I was going to look into it. Actually, Sasha did the the, uh, the work for me. I read through it. It looks at this point there's no way the town can waive it. Um, okay. But I, but I wanted to go through it again and see if there's any. This was a fairly lengthy document. Um, well, I was just. Well, I'm speaking from experience now. Yep. <laughs> the last thing, when we rented the hall, it was for my mom's funeral. And that last thing we wanted to do was call around and get quotes on in liability insurance. And I was just wondering if there was some way that the town could at least put, like, um, I, I finally got it through VLCT because mm -hmm. my homeowners was mm -hmm. way out of yeah. line mm -hmm. to get and they would not cover uh, the town of Morgan as a common shirt. So I wondered if there's any way to like put the PLTP um, number on the contract or okay. as a handout mm -hmm. or just mm -hmm. some way that yeah. um so yeah there's more information about it. So Maybe on, on the website and also on a handout, whatever whatever comes with the town hall. Yeah, right. And the contract. Right. right. Yeah. I just it, it's just, you know, I was calling around and That's a good, good question. Good, okay. good points. Mm -hmm. Okay, and do you require all, if 
events to get um, liability insurance? I also yeah. wonder what it would cost for us to get insurance for third parties to use the fall and then the town of Trunch. But at 103 bucks, it's not going to get much cheaper than that, probably. I mean, they, they, I don't know if the town wants to get involved in being that. Well, only if it is much cheaper, if it's $500 for the year, for example, for us. Right. But at this point, we're not even having enough events to even cover. Maybe it's because of the cost of the insurance. I think probably that could be, I know we've had uh, people sometimes look into it and say we can't do it. Um, no, I wouldn't run into that. that thing where something was cleaned up the money for people to have to mm -hmm. So uh, it's, yeah, it's one of those things that's something I've worked on a couple different times and it just doesn't seem to be, if it's $100, $100, that's what it's going to be. Unfortunately, the towns yeah. get involved yeah, in that. But we can make it Is anyone else here for general public comments? All right, see you then, we'll move on. And uh, we are close enough to um, 625, so why don't we go ahead and move on to the Library of Trustees. So whoever wants to roll up, Ken, or all of you, we're... There's Kate. There's Kate <laughs> there. Denise, you can roll up too. You don't have to be a trustee. If they want to, you know, everyone just get a little closer so we can talk rather than uh, shall we? I made my cake, so I'm not worried about you taking it. <laughs> All right, so uh,
So I didn't see much for uh, much option for putting more things in there uh, without determining the functions that are happening there now. Uh, for example, I could put in red, the red items that I'm going to put up are the things that are on the must-have list. The yellow are the things that are on the would-be-nice list. So if you even just put a circulation desk in, it already impedes things, and it, things would have to be moved around whenever something else was happening. So I'm going to just move over to this space. Here, I guess we have a piano over here and some kids' items along here, and there's chairs and chairs. Which the library. Okay. They do. The, yeah. the piano, too? Not the piano. Okay. That's but the piano. That yeah. kid for insurance and toys, those are in the library. So <clears throat> there are chairs and tables that are kind of, they can be placed pretty arbitrarily. Not like in here. You don't really have any other options. We even have chairs being stored uh, on both sides of the wall to the bathroom. So I'm just going to throw things on here in a not totally random way, but I'll show you that what would happen if if we had shelving that fit at the wainscot of the you know the trim that is the wainscoting between windows, uh, leaving the uh, space above for the quilts and the other artwork. So we have fairly low shelves for example, along there, there, and here, and that would take care of the required shelving for the temporary move. Uh, we would have a circulation desk, and we would need a, a patron's computer desk. And then the kids' area, I mean, obviously that could just be rolled up. It's just a, it's just a uh, carpet, I think. I mean, it just delineates the space for the kids. And then there's a, a it's sort of a roll-out set of cubbies full of kids' books that's low that would go with the kids' area. So those are the required things. You can see that there's no function, I don't think there's any function that could happen in here that, that these items would get in the way of. I mean, the desk could obviously be you know, moved over like that. The books would be open. Though I mean they, they, they wouldn't be protected, but that's that. So if I were to start adding in things that um, would be nice to have, would be nice to actually have two computer tables. It would be pretty important to have storage near the circulation desk because there's books coming and going. Um, we could use another set of shelves the same height. Um, there are a couple of benches. They could go, they're low, and they store books underneath. They could go with the kids' area. It would be really good to have a bulletin board. And, well, there's a, a display cabinet. You know, it could go anywhere. So even with the things that um, would be nice to have. I don't think that the function of the space would be really compromised. So I also took note of the things that we have that are actually exist that could be used. I mean, the shelving in the, in the library can't be taken out and used here because it's not the right dimension, it's way too tall. Um, but we do have some, sh some bookshelves, so instead of the long eight foot Shelf. You could, we could potentially, if they were available, uh, there are five bookcases, short bookcases, upstairs in the historical, in the historical uh, society, I, which are I, I don't know if they're available or not, but they're basically. Did you have a chance to ask? Hmm? Denise, did you have a chance to talk to anyone about whether those we could borrow those bookcases? Well, um, I don't know. I talked with Mary and with Ellie, and we weren't sure which ones you were talking about. So okay, we'll have to go up and, and see. If, you know, can we? Is there things in there that some of them have some books on them that would need to be moved? Okay, but they're low. They're, they're all three, three feet, feet tall. Yeah, three feet by three feet. The ones.
ones along the wall? There were two kind of separating the two. room. Okay. The front room and the middle room, okay. and then there were two on that on the wall too. Okay. And then there's there is one that I think used to be downstairs because it matches the one that's currently in our hallway with the supplies on it. Maybe before the current showing was installed. Okay. Yeah, I guess we'd have to come next and see which ones you're talking about. Okay. But the long and short of it is that most of the items are already here. There's some bookshelves that we still need would we would need to some low bookshelves that would be needed to be purchased or borrowed or lent. And then I think that you know I needed to put in that it would be really nice. Some community member might have a rug and a few, I have three Adirondack chairs that could go there, could be rolled up, the chairs could be put outside if there's an event. Just the, that feeling of being able to sit down, relax, and read something um, is really attractive and the space could use it. So I just thought that this would make it easy to talk about. You can come and play around with the, the different pieces. There are five of those bookshelves in case we look. So we could do that and, and eliminate um, some of that. So that's my story. That's, and that's it. So thank you, Albert. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Um, so we're getting ahead of ourselves with that. But so as you're, I'm sure all well aware, last Monday we had uh, a meeting, a couple of you were there, and we moved to, for safety reasons, we moved to the library, either here or, or somewhere um, more appropriate than the existing location. There's also been discussion where people have brought up um, the landfill office where the town halls or the town offices were located for a year as well. So looking at different options, um, is good in doing these type of exercises. On Sunday, um, Ray and I, Elizabeth and Karen spent some time at the, the town hall uh, going through that. Um, and, and I think we had a pretty good discussion. Um, and I think the four of us agreed. And um, at the time, that probably this building here is not uh, appropriate for temporary library. Um, you know, I don't know what uh, the rest of the board thinks, but certainly Ray and I looked at it and, and didn't feel that this, this room here was functional. And, uh, it was demonstrated with um, the magnets of the here that it certainly wouldn't work. Um, I'm just looking at it, I'll tell you that, but it's nice to have that um, to scale, and I, that is to scale, I would assume. Yeah, um, quarter inch, yeah, the just, just wouldn't work. Over at the town hall, uh, I think there's a there's a lot of potential there. Uh, but one of the things that we we talk about, we spend a fair amount of time on, uh, is the desire um, and the balance that we have here as as uh, select board members to balance the use of of our public buildings. Uh, uh, just speaking. Um, a couple of people on the board, our feelings, and then what everyone chirp in is, is, as a temporary basis, we think the town hall is a good idea, but we'd like to see some use of both up and down. Um, and that's what we talked about uh, over the weekend. And we, we know there are some issues um, that need to be addressed before uh, people would be comfortable down uh, using the downstairs. Uh, humidity issues, uh, we talked about uh, doing something more around the steps as well to, uh, to prevent the water from, from going in uh, and also putting down the floor. So that's kind of where we left off the conversation. That was just Ray and I speaking to, to your, the, the board members there. Uh, so I'd like to hear comment from the rest of the board and then um, we can get comment from um, the library trustees as well. So where does everyone else? Thank you. Uh, did you talk about getting uh, indoor outdoor carpeting for the basement and uh, some furniture as well? Yeah. We did. We talked about um, different <coughs> options before, and 
fact, the library said that they had or thought they might have people in the community that were willing to donate furniture, etc. Okay. That is the case. I mean, since, so you know, and what I talked about to the rest of the trustees is there's a thing I've, I've heard a lot of, hey, I think that's a fantastic idea of what you're doing um, is moving the library over to the town hall. And then on the other hand, we've heard a fair amount of pushback that, hey, listen, this is a town hall. Um, we want to keep it that way. It's our job to try to, again, be that person in the middle, to try to make it work for both parties. Um, and I'm convinced that it can, um, that it can do, we can do that. It, it's gonna take some work on both sides uh, and get other parties involved, the sort of side of whoever wants to be involved, but I think, I really do want to get and make this work where we're using both up and the down. And I think if you do that and actually get that building being used, it'll be, it'll be the best thing for that building. It'll get some of the mustiness out of it, uh, get the heat going, you'll just get people and bodies in that. And I think you'll have a comfortable place to work, Corey. Um, that's bringing people in. Our idea is to make that the community hub, both a town, town hall, and a library. Well, the, uh, Anything, or, or quick, uh, just, uh, uh, now, how, how, um, how much of your collection are you planning to move to the town hall? Um, well, so the red areas up there are to scale. Uh, right. So we're but, talking about the new books, which okay. is kind of where 80 to 90 percent of the circulation happens. Okay. And a portion of the children's collection, the children's picture bookcase is actually movable. So that is an existing piece of furniture that we can bring with us. Um, so that was the plan. And then the rest of the collection would be available by request. So if someone had a specific book that wasn't in the new books, um, okay. they could certainly get it from the existing library space. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, probably did, well, as again, that red space of the patron computer, obviously, right. would need to come with us. Also. Now, where would the, the existing tables and chairs that are at the town hall, where would those go in this? Um, yeah, so again, that's um, questions that would have to be answered to me, so I think, I think this is a good start, but yeah, there's, there's tables and chairs there. I think if we can just agree we're going to work on both spaces, kind of concentrate on putting stuff, maybe the children's books up on the, the stage area, um, and then see what we can do downstairs. I, I'm really hesitant about having the front door, your main entrance, uh, all winter. As I was mentioning mm -hmm. the other day, you know, in, in March at the town meeting when that door is open and closing, horrible. it's horrible, the cold, and you, I mean, you won't be able to keep that building warm if you have anyone coming to your library. Um, it just, you open it and the friggin' thing, it, it's gone. So if we could have the, the main entrance or try to steer people from the driveway into the, the side entrance, have your, uh, your desk, start with your desk and maybe the, the computers down. Here's the, um, the counter. But you go in straight to the left of that so that when, you, when people come down the stairs, you're, you're seeing them. Um, I mean, you can fool around in that area what you want. I think what would be nice is so they're still able to have some tables so if people want, if you want to have your Monday muffin day or something like that where you're um, doing those things where you can still see people interact in the kitchen. Um, we thought, and again, this is just us throwing that the corner down there would be one of your popular areas. If it was carpeted, we put some carpet down there. With lamps, as kids and whatever, that's going to be your cozy area that people are going to want to go and read, I, would, I think. But those are things that I'd like to see you try. And then we can, if it's not working, then we can change things around. But uh, it gives everyone an opportunity to get a little bit of what they want. Um, you know, I think it can work. Well, um, we, the select board received a letter that I thought was representative of the way a lot of people in town feel about this. And a number of people are concerned about the town hall leaving its traditional wall. And the 
sentiment expressed in the letter was they didn't want anything as controversial as moving the library to the town hall to occur without a vote. And they thought that the temporary safety issue is a way to bypass having a town vote. So I'm trying to be very careful about how to do that. Um, second, I think that the downstairs has, of the town hall has some problems. And I think as a board, we need to deal with those problems, regardless of whether the library moves into it or not. That's something that we need to do to protect the town hall. Um, I think that the layouts you've been describing also work downstairs. So I think that's an interesting alternative. But something that this is the first I've heard of is the possible use of a landfill office. I haven't heard that idea yet. And I'm wondering what reactions are to that and what you found out about that. Well, I haven't contacted anyone oh. there. And uh, it, it, was, it was asked on the board. And as Ray and I talked, and a couple of members started, we don't want to move. We're not looking to move. The library across town, even on a temporary yeah, basis. That's, that's because it's not, right. it's not okay. going to work. Okay. And we all agree that it's a temporary move. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why we're here to figure out how okay. we're going to do that. Okay. So, what is there an objection to downstairs only in the town hall? What, what is the issue with that? I think the main Other than moisture. Yeah, I think that about. is the main issue. It helps just to not, even if there's no swimming water, even if you fix that, if the humidity level is too mm -hmm. high, the books will mold and mildew. Mm -hmm. And they will have to be replaced because once you get that started in a collection, it's really hard to stop it from spreading through everything. And then if we move back for next summer and then we bring that mold and mildew with us, it could get the whole mm -hmm. collection of six thousand books and I know that there's insurance and you can replace but you also have to consider the people power required to replace mm -hmm. that collection. Um, so I think it's it's a lot more complicated than simply getting an insurance check and buying the books mm -hmm. again. No, I, I think the downstairs issues need to be fixed. Um, how many books are we talking about for the temporary library roughly? Um, yeah, I didn't actually count up the books. Our whole collection is about 6,000 books mm -hmm. total. And so whatever percentage of our shelving. It's a pretty small percentage. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. the new books the take up one bookshelf right now. And then, uh, you know, again, the red area mm -hmm. is there. But it's, it's seven and a half feet high. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, I, I would, I'm going to just throw out that, that it's about 20 to 25 percent of the collection that you're talking about. Elvis Would you agree? Yeah, I'd take more closer to 20 percent, mm -hmm. probably. And that can, uh, you know, the children's collection, you wouldn't bring it all, so depending on the space, you could, could work with that. Um, the other thing that Jocelyn is kind of struggling with right now with their new renovation is the fact that they have two floors and they really only have staff on one of those two floors. So it kind of creates a safety and a security issue. People that are upstairs at the circulation desk have no idea if someone has come in downstairs to the children's room and, and vice versa. And so, you know, that's definitely mm -hmm. something that they're trying to work on right now. So I think mm -hmm. it, however we set it up, it would, it would need to be such that we didn't create that issue of not mm -hmm. knowing if someone's on one of the two floors. No, I think they're, they're, those are good um, <clears throat> things to bring up. Security, we look at some of that. Ray and I talked a little bit about that, but those are the type of things that we need to look at closer and how that would, how that would work for you guys. Um, certainly, I think the downstairs is a great program space. I mean, I have hosted Dungeons and Dragons down there. We're doing a simple supper this weekend that anyone who wants to come can come to sort of a community cooking and eating experience, and obviously we'll be using the downstairs for that. So mm -hmm. I certainly see opportunities for the downstairs, but uh, I just feel very hesitant about putting books down there. So we also, here in the vault, have that same issue with, with moisture, even on a new building. Um, so we mm -hmm. monitor that, and that's, again, something that we discussed on Saturday, is monitoring moisture levels 
in the basement area um, to be sure that we're not getting mold and just not for the books, but we don't want mold for, mm -hmm. you know, for ourselves. I mean, just, uh, and we have had, uh, in the past year, had environmental firm go in there to, to check levels to be sure. Um, on the other hand, what we're going to remember too is there are no events um, between here and town meeting that are scheduled for the town hall unless they're library events. Yeah, this is the list. So it's it not. Library and so that's another reason why I think it's it's imperative that. The, it's over there, and one I, I, again, I really want to see us use the whole building because the whole building needs to be used to make it a, a viable place and a working. Whether we put some books up, some down, or put, I think again we can figure that out. Uh, um, but as far as disruption of what's going on, I mean, there's nothing going on, and that's the that's the shame. Of everyone wants to keep this as you know the old town hall, but. Nothing happens in the old town hall, you know, except, unfortunately, sorry Denise, when we have unfortunate people's passings and such, you know, we had, you know, we had a nice uh, gathering there for her mother, but, you know, we can't, uh, you know, count on wakes and kind of things to keep our town hall afloat, you know, we just put money into paying it, and we're, we're, we've got to keep it viable, and I think this is the way to do it, this is the one group in town that really has any energy, and uh, really, I mean, there's not a lot. Uh, you got the fire mm -hmm. department in this group uh, that, that do out and do community events. Um, you know, let's try to figure out how to work together on this. Um, last time we were here, you had asked, we are trying to figure out electricity and heating costs, mm -hmm. um, and Cheryl was really helpful in getting the reports from 2013 to 2018. On electricity and from 2015 to 18 on electricity. Um, Harwood occupied the space daily from October to December, so I have those reports and all of the details on them. Um, the electricity bill was actually lower in 2015, which is the year they used it, than the two years prior or the three years since. Um, I didn't get the heating fuel numbers mm -hmm. for the years prior, but it went down and then back up. And you know, I think we all know from living in Vermont that heating mm -hmm. fuel is really going to be impacted most by Mother Nature. But it doesn't seem like there those costs spiked when it was being used daily for three months. Yeah, well, I think there's the minimum that we keep it anyway, so right. because we have the pipes in there. And mm -hmm. As far as cost, my thought is we're not going to be having to keep electric um, on in this building over here, or really do much well, without. Well, if, if we have the collection available by request, I think we need to have the lights on. Okay. And we can keep the heat at low, but we again want to prevent moisture buildup in the winter. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to be getting a lot of heating fuel deliveries, but I think there's a bare minimum. We're not going to have the floor light on that. Or the portalette, which is in the office. You're okay turning the internet and phone off at the mm -hmm. library. Yes. Right. Yeah, right. I just called today, <coughs> and um, because the town halls already <coughs> set up, it's a $13.50 fee to move everything. Transfer your numbers and such. $13.50. It might be $30 <coughs> if the tech has to cut. Would you be okay with us getting rid of the portalette for the winter? <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to use that when you're feeling, you know, stuff. Yeah, I always like it. So, okay, okay, uh, Olga, Olga, pardon me. Um, could you do um, a drawing for the basement as well? Sure. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. the drawing's already done. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I just, I don't have it with me. Okay. I'd like to see that. If mm -hmm. we could put some of that stuff there, some we have, and if we have an upstairs and downstairs to work with. I, I have aesthetic, some aesthetic concerns about the downstairs, you know, besides what you guys have already talked about. And it, it just, I just want to express the feeling that um, I don't think that the ceiling in there is uh, helping the space any the way that it is. And, um, and that came up yesterday as well. Yeah, it, it's, it's very claustrophobic. It feels like 
mean, I can touch the ceiling pretty much <laughs> everywhere. And, um, and it cuts it, the lighting, the lights. Uh, I mean, there are lights there, but I'm talking about natural light. Yes. And here we're talking about people that would use the space the most are going to be in the least aesthetic, comfortable place and the space that is beautiful and wonderful that people would be feeling uh, enlightened by goes empty. And that, that's just that's just my opinion and I just wanted to throw it out there. Just I think it's one part of <coughs> I think it's mm -hmm. worth just acknowledging that, that that's sort of what it is. Although I'm sure there are many things that could be done in the basement to make it more appealing, but it's certainly not appealing now to me. Yeah, I don't think there's any disagreement that it needs some work, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And if anyone has any thoughts about how to improve that, that would be very much appreciated. Yeah, we're down the ceiling and, and it, it would require, well, I, I, I got up there mm -hmm. a few months ago. Uh, I don't remember everything. But it seemed to me that the ceiling could be taken down and, and done in a different way. Yeah, yesterday I was asking about the dropped ceiling because I also, at 5'4", can't even stretch my arm. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we poked our heads up in some of the tiles and there's ductwork. Um, and there are fluorescent lights. Obviously, in a longer term plan, the library doesn't want fluorescent ceiling lights. Um, so there, we could maybe get rid of that and have higher ceiling. And yeah, because I, I think the heating, the heating system isn't, well, okay, I, I don't remember what I, I, I made notes, but I think something can be done. Yeah. <coughs> I think it would be a, a cost item. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be work that would need to be done. Right. Just going back to your, your plan, uh, so should an event come up, I understand what Everything is mobile, the shelving. And well, the shelving that's the on. The shelving would not be mobile. Along the wall, it wouldn't be mobile, but it, how, I mean, it wouldn't necessarily impede an event. The only thing, I mean, the big event obviously is town meeting, and I know, you know, uh, they walk through that area to go up to vote, and it, it's pretty tight, as even without the shelves. Well, the shelving would only be about eight inches. Okay. Not even a foot. And the other thing that came up from Cheryl Lynn with the voting booths, mm -hmm. there needs to be so much square footage um, allowed mm -hmm. per voting booth for privacy reasons. And we're at this point, we're, we're already at that limit and probably, probably not at uh, <coughs> where we should be, but that's all we have. So if we start adding anything else up there, that becomes it's more of an issue. Mm -hmm. I thought I heard that the voting wasn't happening there, but I guess I'm wrong. Town meeting, it always happens there. Mm -hmm. When we have a general election, it happens over here at the school because we need the, more of the parking. Mm -hmm. um, I miss for the we'd like to have and must have categories. Where does the children's furniture that's already in town hall fall? Well, I don't think that's up there. <laughs> I didn't include it because it wasn't it's already there. there. <laughs> I didn't know whose it was, mm -hmm. okay. but it it currently, you know, it's along this wall, just loose um, pieces. I will say that we uh, we <coughs> fit it all at the top of the stairs. That's sure. where it's been all summer, but we haven't been hosting read and play, so it actually disappears from the space pretty mm -hmm. easily. Um, we just put it on the stage because after more fast, we were tired. <laughs> but. Uh, well, two things about that. It was extremely popular at Morefest. If you stopped by our booth, you saw many children playing right there. And um, and then Sunday, I was at the town hall, and it was being used by the children who were there. It was, it was being enjoyed. A number of little, I mean, there weren't that many, but the ones that were there were having a good time playing. I think it's great stuff to have in that out rather than in, in the hallway. You know, it needs to be a hook. But in terms of town meeting, oh, you right. know, it gets tucked away. We can easily accommodate. And I think.
some of the earlier drawings this Alvin did, you know, with the really permanent modification showed that you could still fit 100 right. chairs, and I think he put out 75 for town meeting or something like that. So. I'll just add that um, the plans that I've seen and different people do and that um, were done at the uh, design charrette up in Burlington uh, that did some brainstorming for, 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 for doing this. Uh, it included um, setting up the, uh, the shelving in a, in a way that, that bends, that uh, swings, that is attached, let's say, if, if the whole collection were to be in here in the future, there would be shelving along the wall that's attached and then another shelf that would swing on rollers and, and a hinge. And that way you could close the shelves. They would be protected, the books would be protected. Uh, and again, it would only take 16 inches, or 12, you know, 12 to 16 inches of space. So that's, it fits with the, some of the long range ideas or brainstorms that have been mentioned. Is there anything else you guys would like to add or questions that you have? Um, I would just like to add that I've already warned a special meeting for us tomorrow so that we could talk about what was discussed here and then get back to you with, with our thoughts. Sure. Right. Well, did you have a chance to read? ask for clarification about the best ways to communicate with you? Because the letter we sent you was not. Received. If you could send it right to Sasha here at, um, at, what's it, M Select Board? At Mortown PT. That's where Emily did it. That is where it was sent. It was not in my mailbox. So what's the email? I'm sorry. M select board. Like M is in more time. Mm -hmm. More time. But not spelled out, just the letter M. Mm -hmm. And then select board all one word. Mm -hmm. Thanks. At moretownvt.net. And then what I can do is call yeah. Sasha. So what's your number? It's not a lot of people. Mm -hmm. it's just a good test. Okay. We we do have one other unrelated question, which sure. is that um, we understand budgets are due October first. Our next meeting is October tenth. It's the second yes. Thursday. I think it's the tenth. So we're wondering if we can have an extension and submit it budget. Probably work for you guys. Okay. You hear me asking as long as you're you working on it and you Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had a preliminary discussion, but we found out about it three days before our last meeting, so that's great. Mm -hmm. I, I have one, actually one last really sure. question. <laughs> um, so this is a temporary fix as we continue to discuss ways to revitalize the village and help the library, you know, really bring the community together as a hub, as our mission states. Um, and back in April, we had discussed creating a broader based subcommittee mm -hmm. to sort of try and move the idea forward and not just have it be the trustees creating it, but really get the community involved. So I'm just wondering where things stand with that. That's sure, again, that was something we, we, we brought that up on uh, Sunday. And that's something that I'll take responsibility for not getting that started. We had a number of changes with personnel here and, and other things going on, so we kind of get put in the back burner, but I think once we, and again, we brought this up Sunday, once we have this temporary thing fixed and, and all right, get a place for the winter, I think that's a good, uh, that's a good stepping point to, all right, now we want to have a place we can meet, um, we can sit down here and then start to put that community together. So that will be my, my uh, to you as we'll get that going this fall once we're Let's get this first phase done. Uh, trying to get you in there temporarily, figure out how, how we're going to do that, and then, then we can move that, move that forward that way. Uh, and I just want to say it's not any effort on our part to bypass any sort of vote, uh, as the letter suggested. Just I want to go on record saying that it's not some attempt to take over. It's definitely an 
attempt to create a comfortable space for the winter, now that this conversation's been going on for two years, might go on for two more. And so I just I want to make sure that that's on the record, that that's not yeah. our intention. I, I would address that as well. It, it certainly I don't I think you were trying to circumvent anything. Um, they didn't ask for a special vote uh, or a special meeting. Uh, one of my colleagues uh, asked for that and thought because of the safety issues, it's important that we just put that to bed and um, move the library to a, to a safer, more secure place. Um, so we've done that and now our, now our work is figuring out. I think we, I mean, I think we know that the town hall is the place where it really needs to be for a number of different reasons now, we need to figure out that happy medium where we can all feel like we're, we're winners here. And there can be win-win with the library, with historical society, with community in general. And that's what our job here is, is to do, and to work with everyone to, to figure it out. And that's what our commitment will be. Um, Ray is looking into, uh, and Ray, if by the next meeting, if we can have, you know, you're gonna talk to actually Joe, about cement work down around that. Right. As far as the, the water stuff, Ray's dealing with that. I'm dealing with the pricing on the floor. So we're working on that stuff as well. So we're trying to put our, you know, walk the walk as well on this side. We, why don't we get together our next meeting, um, which is, so which one's our next meeting? October 7th. October 7th, is that correct? Looks like I can't, yeah, the first Monday there is the 7th. Why don't we get together back then? And if we um, possibly at that point we would maybe still need this um, floor plans, or, or I think it would be good. And, and maybe we can again work together, uh, Elizabeth, Corey, uh, Karen, or whoever, between now and then, coming up with some scenarios, um, working with us, or and uh, we'll also uh, find out our information so that we can make an informed decision on the seventh. Will work for everyone. Is that fair to everyone around the table? Yeah. Other than, did you discuss the ceiling at all? Yes, I did. In, ter in ter yeah, in terms of tearing it out. Or we we looked at it and thought that probably something could be done better. Because it's terribly ugly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and I think I mean if you look under it, I mean something like now if you look at a lot of places you go. You know, uh, duct work and, and pipes are kind of the th in thing to, to kind of see. You know, when it's got hand heaped timbers up there and the hand heaped floors, so it, you know, it can be attractive, but it needs to be. Uh, I also saw insulation up there, so you know, I need to figure out mm -hmm. what is that doing for that floor? You know, is it really essential stuff, or if we're having the heat down, is it going to go up anyway? So, those are some of the things on the that ceiling I think would, would make a, a tremendous. Some of the, again, the positives, it's, it's handicap accessible. Uh, you can get uh, wheelchairs in there if you need. There's uh, bathrooms, it's, it's just good stuff. And I think it'll make a good spot, the whole building for the town to, to figure out how to use as both a uh, library and a town, functional town hall. I have one more question. Going back to the liability insurance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we go in there, are we already covered by the library's liability insurance or by the town's liability insurance? Because you're a town entity, it's a town insurance. So, if people wanted to use the town hall, as Denise did, and they reserved it through the library, it's the same process. Yeah, same thing. Those are the main difference. It's still an outside. Right. Okay. No, if they were just try to find some work around. around. No, no, no. Believe me, we'd love to work around. <coughs> yeah. I was looking for with the through BLTC to see, and there just doesn't seem to be that. Um, okay. Because um, there's nothing on the bar back. I mean, we'd love to. Because that again would probably get more people using the facility if they didn't have to charge you know an extra hundred bucks when you have the birthday party. It's real money for most of us. Any other questions or concerns at this juncture? Everyone good? Yes. All right, so why don't uh, we stay in touch, Elizabeth? 
and uh, keeping it um, the Bristol where you guys are at and what you're doing, and we'll do the same. And we'll, we'll uh, get back together here soon. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Longer term, doing concrete work at the town hall, is there a potential for a little uh, grade exit window at the country store? So, um, like I said, I'm going to be getting out of here shortly. There's a couple things I just want to, ladies, can you just keep your voice down just a little bit? Uh, Sasha, for public record, this is public comments. I just wanted to run um, that we all saw Chris Butch's letter. Yep. I'm sure that's reflected. Um, and also, I didn't see it sent out to us, but Laura Schaller sent a quick thank you for our, um, I just want to say a quick thank you for, to all for our very articulate and pointed by the members of the Harvard School Board. And I also, Peter, I uh, sent me a, maybe you guys got it as well, a thank you for sending it up. Mm -hmm. so, and as you uh, probably saw, the Valley Report. Um, I do. Front page is you know, mm -hmm. more town is concerned about um, the process. So, um, it's getting a little um, attention, anyways. Mm -hmm. so and what about the email from um, Katrina? Which email is on that? The, the, the one that has had to do with. Um, the school board meeting where they said that the school really only owns. Oh, two yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, John. So, this, um, yeah. Katrina brought up a uh, point that during the meeting, one of the uh, Harwood Union members brought up that uh, the school here only had 0 0.2 acres of acreage to, to play on or, or to use. So, when I asked, Sasha and she put it together, I guess her and Cheryl and put it together. I have a hard copy for me because I, I couldn't open it, but um, has put together a, a great list of what we have for acreage, uh, tennis facilities, mm -hmm. baseball facilities, everything. So, right, but it's all town owned. And um, we have to figure out a way to treat this as a positive rather than a negative. They're coming. They're making it sound like a negative because it's town mm -hmm. property that they, on paper, don't have use of, which is ludicrous. It's because they do have, they do have use, of it, yeah. and they always have. Um, so I don't know how that can best be done. And I'm not even sure if um, you know if there's anything anywhere about that on that with the property that the, the school does have. So, so. 2.1 acres, and for some reason it's not in the brand new the school part of it, so the ministers need to do something there. Okay. All right, that, and I think even in our uh, uh, memorandum of understanding, our MOU with them, there mm -hmm. could be that in there. Right, right. And I think. Parking lots, and I would let's take let's review that. Yeah, um, if we could take a look at that, Sasha, because I understand because isn't that that talks about use of the soccer fields and the, the fields, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's why the cost is there. right. So, I missed this. What's the supposed negative of the school having little land? They their, their point was that they can't use it, they didn't have use of it. Yeah, it's, it's um, but. Again, yeah, they've put a list of what we have, and then if I think Sasha will pull an MOU, you may need to use a little reasoning. But if they're if we're using, you know, you're being charged for half of it means you're using it. Mm -hmm. use. That was that was the, uh, the idea behind that. 
they've just made like that packet as well as the SSD. Right. Well, then that's but it shows that you have the agreement they can use all this awesome space. Right. And you know it does cost money to to work things, so that'll have to be understood as well. But um, and and, and I, I think we we have to make our presence at the at the school board meetings as much as possible. Yeah, so with that being said, it's very important. Here in Harwood, um, I, I think it was on the front page forum, front porch forum, uh, tonight or last night, it was Kristen's recap. Mm -hmm. um, it talked about the meetings, there's a, an outreach meeting, and so I think it is important that um, you know, it's many of us on the board intend that we do. And there's Do we have to warn that? No. No. If we're just at a public meeting like that, it's not like we're going in and uh, holding holding a meeting or a day. You know, I wouldn't suggest the three of us sit together and, you know, start <laughs> not even talking together. But, you know, we can all be at a the public space and not conduct a meeting and not have to warn it. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to think of? Um... Not at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a good idea, but mm -hmm. yeah. Um, we'll look a little bit more into that. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else, John? On, uh, no. 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 All right. Uh, so is there anything else for me before I get out of here? I just wanted to recap. Uh, in the first meeting in October, are we going to have a formal vote on whether the library goes to the town hall or... We have yeah, I think we have to make a decision where they're going to... So that's it. going to be in October? In October. Okay. I just I mean, and and again, I think I mean, we've pretty much ruled out this and then ruled out everything mm -hmm. but the town. Yeah. I think what we're going to do is put how we want to make that work. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we saw tonight, you know, there's, obviously there's some res resistance for being uh, downstairs. Um, but I think there's, you know, there needs to be some compromise on both mm -hmm. both sides of things. I think using it on the building is the whole building is, uh, you know, a fantastic idea, and I think that's what we'll that will end up ultimately having. Um, <coughs> probably holding out for downstairs only, um, assuming we get the moisture issues fixed, and that would be until a vote. I think. Yeah, I think ultimately when there's a permanent change, there yeah. won't be a vote, mm -hmm. you know, if, if that right. if that comes. But I think at this point we need to make decisions as a board and, mm -hmm. um, you know, again, what's best, let's, let's look at the whole mm -hmm. building. Remember that, again, it's not like the thing's being used at all. I mean, mm -hmm. it's zero use, so let's let's use it. And um, one, one last thing on, on Chris's uh, email is that he, he talked about heading up a, a committee to try and you know get the town hall to use more, and this is something we have talked about. Mm -hmm. And I mean, can certainly the town hall can still be used; yeah. it can still be rented, mm -hmm. right? Oh, absolutely. No, so I, I mean, if he wants to do that, I think that's a great idea. Can we do a motion and say, "Go ahead"? Well, I think we want to have a little more fun on what we have. We want. Yeah, we have. Yeah. I think we have. Yeah, I think we have to. But anyone wait until want. October at any rate. But, yeah. yeah, and if anyone wants to. Start uh, uh, marketing the, the town hall there. Mm -hmm. Moment, if they, they they have someone that wants to use it or, or such, you know, let your friends know that it's available. They can use it anytime. Mm -hmm. Want to put something out on front porch forum? This is not. Board is certainly welcome to. I think mm -hmm. we, we do all want to. We had. I know Katrina used to do it mm -hmm. a little bit and sent out yeah. things, and we were renting furniture at one point, right. which uh, I don't think we have the manpower to be doing yeah. that anymore. But mm -hmm. now the idea is to use the building. Full capacity, both up and down in my. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. So, Dara um, and, and John, I'm sorry, I need to leave. I have a um, something I didn't get to in my driving hours right now. So, I have a little time here tonight, but the rest of the board will take care of you and thank you for, for all that you're doing. Sure. And I'll see you guys. Do you need to sign in? Look, I do something else, but John, you can take over if you want. And, uh, okay. What's that? Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Dara. Yeah, Dara. Yeah, come on up. Put your seat up. All right. Thanks for having me. I don't know whether you guys got a chance to see yes. the draft enhanced energy plan that I circulated, but I thought I could just talk you through okay. where we're at with this planning process. And, uh, Safe travels, Tom. Yep, thank you. So, uh, let's see, where should I start? Okay. So, Moortown received um, assistance from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission to prepare an enhanced energy plan, which has a lot of benefits to the town, um, helps us have sort of a compact, standalone document to chart our goals and our progress, which is a lot easier than trying to sift through a huge town plan. Um, and then it has a very practical benefit of if it's approved, and it should be because we're working with RPC mm -hmm. and we're doing all the required sections. Um, it can give the town the substantial deference mm -hmm. uh, that we may want to have as siting and renewables come Mm -hmm. bigger penetrations. And so that's um, one of the goals and we put together some assistance from the um, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Uh, we've had some community reviewers so far, we've had some planning commission review so far. Um, and so we have, there's basically, um, our goal is to have a very good solid draft ready to go to you and then um, by December and then have public meetings because this draft becomes an amendment uh, to the town plan. Mm -hmm. So we have to do whatever the town plan amendment process requires, which I believe is public hearings. So the planning commission would do one and then you guys would do one. So we were thinking, you know, first quarter to have that happen. But the actual goal for, for the writing and the community engagement and input from town, um, you guys and other town members, is um, this fall. So where we are now is we, we got some data provided to us from the RPC from various sources. Um, and so there's, there's some required data that has to be part of the energy plan. So we have that. Then we had the fun part was identifying pathways that we thought were achievable for our town and time frames. Mm -hmm. And so we did that. And you know, we weren't super ambitious. We wanted to just kind of get started. You know, that mm -hmm. it's a very overwhelming thought transitioning our energy system. Um, and you know, trying to take these state level goals and make them local. So we, you know, um, thought of some things and um, th that's really the meat of it that I would love to have your reactions to. And that can be um, whenever you have a chance to take a look at the draft, read that section and just, you could email thoughts, we could schedule another time if you haven't had a chance to look at it yet. We also have, um, so the pathways, let's see, they start on page 12, we have about, yeah, about a dozen pages. And it's in a table format, it's very clear. And it's, you know, it says who's responsible. Um, how, how high a priority it is, and that's something that we definitely want to talk to you guys about, because priorities uh, are something you guys can set. Um, and then how we're going to measure success. So this is a real action framework compared to some plans. Um, so we tried, you know, we're new, we're kind of a reinvigorated energy committee. Um, so we tried to set, you know, reasonable goals to get started. But they're all around the major sectors of building quality, mm -hmm. thermal, you know, how warm, how we heat, and how we retain that heat in our structures, and transportation, and generation. So those are the areas that we address different strategies for all of those things. And, um, you know, from the data we learned that, like most of Vermont, our, our big 
energy use is around heating and transportation. Um, that generation is actually the cleanest thing that we're doing right now. Electricity is pretty clean in Vermont. Mm -hmm. um, so we went to Morefest with um, the goal of kind of talking to people about the fact that we're doing this planning and that we um, kind of wanted to hear from people about what parts of those sectors, because it's such a big thing, were priorities. You know, if we were to do a couple things this year, would they be transportation focused? Would they be um, thermal heat source focused? Would they be about buildings? So we got some great input from people, even though it rained. And, um, and then we're having a second public engagement piece, which is the third part of the, of the plan, the third required part. So you have your data, you have your pathways, and then you have preferred sites. And you guys might remember that the state has preferred sites, but they're giving local um, officials and towns some um, discretion to identify additional ones. So we wanted to work with you guys, the planning commission, the RPC, who's going to provide us with the mapping that we need, and hold a public forum where we could get input about what people see as um, places they would want to have generation and places they wouldn't. So, yeah. Question. Sure. Is that strictly citing as far as locations or citing as far as criteria? I'm not you sure I understand. Okay. Um, if you want to describe the town's preferences for citing, you have mm -hmm. a couple of options. You, and I don't know if people have accepted them. Okay. One is you take a map and you circle spots and say, it's okay here, we don't like it over here. Well, yeah. The other way is we are okay with locations that are, say, this distance or, or with this uh, view line unobstructed or in, you know, yeah. but not over here, but not over here, but what the criteria are. I think so. And I, think that's I don't know what we're allowed. I think we're allowed, this is the thing, this is the thing that hangs over all of it. Anything you say um, to prohibit renewable energy development applies to any development. So if we were to say, we don't want, mm -hmm. you know, something up on the Moortown Gap, we would be also saying it for anything else. That would be cell towers, that would be, um, mm -hmm. you know, so they really are trying to, the, I guess this is the Public Utility Commission, to make sure that towns don't disadvantage energy. Um, mm -hmm. So there is that. But, but you could say, following that, you mm -hmm. could say no structures larger than X square Absolutely. feet, which would allow a cell tower that's right. Would allow a moderate sized house, right. but would not allow 10 acres of solar panels in that spot. That's right. And that's the other thing that we're going to get support. So at this meeting, our meeting is on um, September 24th, so it's a mm -hmm. week from tomorrow at the town hall. We will have the RPC there, and they can answer a lot of questions because they have a lot of depth, and they also have a lot of maps. So we're going to see some of the different known constraints that we have mm -hmm. because of you know, conserved lands. Um, so, so that will all be available to us. And then our goal is to take any input we get, and we're hoping someone from the select board can make it. Um, the planning commission will be there, and we are going to put an ad on Front Porch Forum tonight. I kind of want to talk to you guys first. Um, I have to figure out how to make it sound engaging. <laughs> it's not as easy as, uh, you know, preferred sites. It's like, uh, so, and we'd love to also wrap in a little update on what we're doing with the plan mm -hmm. and why we're doing it. Um, so, we're hoping it will be a, a good hands-on kind of exercise, meeting exercise, and we'll have red refreshments. So, that's going to get advertised. It may require more than one meeting. We don't really know. Um, so, then we'll put together that last section of the draft, and maps are created to go with it. And... Um, then we'll have it all in place. The RPC would review it. You guys would review it. The Planning Commission first, and then um, that's kind of where 
where we are. And we hope that by um, first quarter, we can start those public hearings. So, yeah, it's gone really well. We've learned a lot. And we're hoping to grow the energy committee mm -hmm. in the town. Um, I know just by being at Morefest, you know, a lot of buzz started about carpooling to Montpelier. We have a lot mm -hmm. of people who live in more town work in Montpelier, and there's a lot of opportunities that we're not taking advantage of. So it's kind of fun to think about leveraging resources that already exist just by getting the word out and talking to each other a little bit, maybe getting creative about some things, because we do have access to bus routes from um, Red Hen and Waterbury, but we can't get there. So that missing piece is something we might want to practice or promote through, you know, bike to work days where you bike to the bus or, you know, different things we can do um, around transportation because that's a really thorny one. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also some goals that we identified about, like, you know, um, the RPC suggested um, that the town start budgeting for electric trucks, which oh. I think are a ways down the road. So I suggested, how about um, we, we track our vehicle miles traveled? Because we could have goals around that. Um, so, you know, I really would like to you know, get your feedback on, on that kind of thing, whether it seems feasible or... Um, and then, of course, there's, there's goals around town-owned buildings. Is it time to look at the audit we had in the past and see what we've done? Do we do a new audit? So there's a lot of um, things we can do with municipal properties. And um, mm -hmm. so there's goals around those in the plan. Anything about um, the charging stations? In there? Yes, huge goal. Uh, makes a lot of sense right here, the municipal mm -hmm. lot, mm -hmm. and explore. You know, the, there was some funding. We just missed a grant on that. Yeah, I gotta tell you, part of, partly, one of the thoughts I had was, do we want to get our paving project dealt with first? Because if you put the chargers in, they kind of need to be, it, you know. A designated spot. It's a designated spot, and I wasn't sure if we would want to make an investment like that before and then have the big stormwater project and all that happening. I don't know. So that was a question for you guys. Um, but the other problem is the funding, very competitive. So. I, I would like to explore other ways, maybe through partnerships, mm -hmm. to get discounted funding. Mm -hmm. So we could do it. <laughs> yet having a chart. Oh, it's really hard to use that word when I mean money. And an EV charging station that charges for the electricity. So a private oh, yeah. company might want to. Oh, do yeah. It. Yeah, yeah a lot, there's a lot of those. Okay. Because um, we could offer. Yeah, I know, and Green Mountain Power might be willing to do something too. Um, so that's something to really explore, because it would be really great. People are parking their cars here for hours. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have a lot in the valley right now. And you're right, we have, yeah. we have the paving issue. We have the paving issue, so um, that's what kind of gave me pause. I talked to Cheryl, and mm -hmm. she was like, let's hold off. And then I found out, you know, how it all went with how many applicants they got. And, but I did get a copy of a winning application, so I have that <laughs> as a um, guide. But um, let's see. Do you guys have any other questions? Or? Since I haven't read that yet, no. I, I'm okay. sure I will. But. I'll make it easy for you because what I'm going to do is I did get some really great... Um, feedback from Joyce Manchester, who's a transportation mm -hmm. yep. uh, member, and she's also an economist. Uh, so she, ran, she went through the data in here, and she found some things, which was great. And she suggested some new pathways as well. So I'm going to incorporate her comments. Okay. Um, any comments we get Tuesday night that are related to, uh, to the existing sections. And then ask, would it be Sasha to put, put this draft plan on the website? I can get it to that person. Okay. Okay. So that way it will just be there. And in fact, we have an energy page on the website that we need to update. Okay. 
So like right now, it doesn't mention me. Um, it, it has some inaccurate information about when we meet. But we can update that and put the link to this on it. Mm -hmm. And I can reference that link in a front porch forum posting. And I thought okay. one more, one sure. more question. And are we able to slightly decouple from the state energy goals? And the reason I'm asking is, I must admit to some cynicism about how, the, whether those goals will remain in place as we get closer to the deadlines. Mm -hmm. So, can we be a little more flexible so we don't have to keep amending it? Yeah. Um, I mean, in some cases, some of the goals we're going to surpass quickly. Like, we already found that the heat pump goal is like really low hanging fruit. It, it doesn't really make sense. So we're not sure if there was like some, something strange with the data. But um, I do think that we'll probably want to decide with you how often we review the plan. Mm -hmm. Like I was gonna propose like an annual meeting where we go over how we've done on our goals. Um, and then, you know, we could, we could decide if something needs to be changed based on changes in the larger work around us. Um, the other thing that's complicated about this is that, you know, we have all these other towns, we're a region. Um, it's kind of silly to have these very mm -hmm. single, like pretending like you're an island when, you know, that's not how it works. So we do have Waitsville doing the same mm -hmm. project right now. I think Middlesex is doing it. So that's another thing I'd like to do mm -hmm. is kind of have a group regional check-in on how we've done this planning process and, and what that might mean like in terms of meeting goals. Like if, if one town has more, um, more comfort with solar and less concerns about scenic mm -hmm. stuff, they could pick up some of the slack and we have more hydro. You know what I mean? Like there's a way to mm -hmm to work mm -hmm. together to, to reach goals. Mm -hmm. And um, we also have a goal in here of working with the other energy committees. Um, they're all small right now. So okay. we're thinking, let's band together, run workshops together. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, that's is something the, we want to do. Is the Central Vermont RPC already doing some of that? You know, we're keeping track of what the different towns are doing? That's a good question. I'm not sure how, I mean, I think so. Like in our case, when we were doing this, they had a lot of examples for us to look at, but I'm not sure if they've pieced it all together. Yeah, and I know- you could do that coordination for us. That, that would be cool. nice. Is Pam a... Pam is not, the, um, no, they hired a new planner who's doing energy now. Uh -huh. And his name's Zach, and he's been nice to work mm -hmm. with. He's very young. Um, and then they have their own regional plan they have to do and that includes an energy plan. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna be revisiting that soon and I'm gonna ask them that question. Because that could be in their plan, mm -hmm. that they do that, that yeah. they provide that. Yeah. Um, well, they do it with everything else. So I know, imagine. they do so much, yeah. it's yeah. great. It's been wonderful <clears throat> working with them and um, they gave us some helpful things for more fast and they're gonna help, I'm meeting with them tomorrow and they're gonna help kind of figure out how to do the meeting on the 24th, you know, like activities. and um, So I, they've just been invaluable. I'm really glad we got the grant <laughs> to work with them. Um, so any other questions or priorities, priority areas? Or? No? No. Okay. There is also, in terms of the website, and I'll put it, an email together mm -hmm. with all of this in it, but we have, uh, all of our towns have a Vermont Energy Dashboard. So mm -hmm. I'd really like the link to the dashboard to be on the energy page, on the municipal side. So, cause that's really where we're going to show progress. You know, we don't have to do a lot on our municipal site cause we already have a place where we can, sh that can with maps that can show like how much solar's going in and where, and people can put stories if they want. And, so that's all getting enhanced. So we're gonna to get to be able to take advantage of that. Um, and, you know, have a place that we can see progress. 
mm -hmm. besides this document <laughs> that lives um, on a website. So, this is not mine. So, great. Good. All right. So, maybe somebody will make it to the 24th meeting, if possible. I know you guys have some meetings. If not, it will be well documented and it will end up in our report and then we'll, you'll see it. So, um, we can decide if a second one is needed. Mm -hmm. All okay. right. Super. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And okay. congratulations on the sidewalk. I yeah. heard it. I heard yeah, it. I you mentioned you. it. Yeah, totally, yeah. And then it was on the radio this morning after yeah. I heard. Yeah. It's really nice to hear more town and sidewalks. <laughs> One sentence. I'm not getting excited. It's been a lifelong project. I know it's yeah, been no, so yeah. many years. It's been uh, thank you. Okay, thanks again, Eric. Sure. Good. John. Hello. Come on up. All right. How's it going? Good. How are you? Doing well, thank you. That's good. Um, I just realized that I may not have sent you guys the map. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Which would have been really helpful at the beginning. But if I have not, um, I, I will certainly forward it to you. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm going to wear a couple hats tonight, one for the Moortown Recreation Committee and one as the Executive Director of the Mad River Riders. Um, the Rec Committee has been uh, managing the, the trails uh, behind the school. Yeah. And uh, largely that's been through uh, the volunteer efforts of the Mad River Riders and the, and the Recreation Committee. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, initially, I, back in the day, 2004, I, I was the one who went out and mapped all the trails and, and, uh, and did that too, just to give everybody a little history about my involvement in, in, in that particular area. Um, the rec committee recently has, you know, did a survey and we learned that people are very interested in the trails. Mm -hmm. um, the trails themselves are pretty difficult up there and, uh, and um, as far as being a resource for the kids, it's great for walking, but they don't go very far because it's difficult. Um, and as a biking route, it's pretty much impossible for, for most of the kids, especially to go up mm -hmm. uh, or, or to create any kind of a loop system there. Um, and the same for skiing and snowshoeing. It's, it's a pretty steep hill and mm -hmm. without any kind of you know, grading and, and stuff, it's, it's a tougher place to, to get around. So um, the idea is that we upgrade the nature trail which is the trail that leaves from the back of uh, the, the fields um, and climbs up to the top of the, of, of, uh, above the septic and, um, and then create a way down from there that uses some of the existing trails uh, along the fields down low, um, but would create a, a smaller uh, piece, approximately uh, 1,200 feet of the nature trail for there. Um, the nature trail itself is actually Pretty well pitched for a beginner trail. There are a couple small pieces that we might uh, we might um, reroute about 300 feet of that, um, and uh, and then um, we also talked about potentially putting in a skills park in that backfield, which is too small really for any type of you know. I mean, you can play soccer in there, you can play other sports in there, but it's not a regulation field, and people aren't using it in that way right now. Um, it, it is a mode area, but I don't know that it is used for anything, you know, particular at this point. Um, so a skills park would be, would consist of natural materials, uh, stone, dirt, and wood, uh, locally harvested if, if possible. Um, we may have to use some pressure treated wood uh, in, in some instances if, you know, if, if that is what was called for. But the goal would be uh, to create something that is fun to both run and, and bike on um, in that 180 Uh, and um, and then uh, we also um, proposed uh, an upgrade to the Hornbeam Ridge Trail, which is slightly above the Nature Trail um, and comes back into the ancient out. I'm, I'm sorry, into the Pine Needle Path Trail. And that would be a shorter one, about 2,200 feet of total, but would be new trail because the Hornbeam Ridge Trail uh, is extremely wet um, as it is right now and very steep. It goes right up a drainage essentially, so it, it we, we've kind of not promoted the use of it um, mm -hmm. because it's, it, 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 is, uh, it is not in, in great shape. Um, so uh, the, the rec committee, um, I, I proposed this idea as, the, uh, as 
you know, the matter of riders would be doing this work. The rec committee said, um, we, uh, we appreciate that work and we would like you to bring it to the select board at this point. Um, so uh, I've done a, a you know, rough budget on each of the pieces um, and uh, our goal is that we would submit a, a, a recreation trails program grant um, for this coming cycle to, to at least do some part of it. There may be phasing, um, it might not uh, be all done in one, you know, one chunk, it's, it's kind of a lot uh, actually to do all in one. But um, as a project, uh, and, and we've, we've been very successful with RTP grants uh, as the member of riders and um, basically almost every year for the last uh, 12 years we've, we've gotten one. Um, I will say that this project um, hits more of the criteria for this grant than any other project we've ever done. Um, I can't guarantee that we will get money, <laughs> um, but it really, at a school, uh, you know, beginner access uh, for everybody, it really, it really, you know, checks off a lot of the, the things that, um, that that particular grant could, could fund. Um, so uh, I can send you the map, um, I can answer questions, I can, do anything else you'd like right now. Okay. Um, but, but that's the idea. The Recreation Committee uh, approved it, and, uh, and so we're, we're bringing it to you as the you know, uh, official, you know, sort of owners of the town as the owners of the land. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the town match would be on such a grant? Um, it, it's not necessarily a town match. So okay. far, the matter of riders have provided a match for each of these, these grants, so, um, but it is a 20% match. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. We have other funding sources that we use to match it. Um, typically, we'll get a member of Valley Rec District grant every year too. Again, it fits everything that they that they want. So um, we're you know we're likely to, to get success there too. Um, we have great relationships with Cabot, with Lawson's, with Sugarbush, which I also work at <laughs> to take off another and you know, put on another hat here. Um, so there there are you know there are a lot of there's a lot of support for this type mm -hmm. of. And I think as a resource for the for the kids and for the town, um, we would really you know be using the land in a way that is uh, it, it is low impact. Um, mm -hmm. It allows the kids to use it as an education resource in a way that they haven't uh, necessarily done um, done yet. And uh, and really you know it, it, it's it's it, it fits with what, what I think more town would want on, on the land there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, his, uh, did Michelle bring up the management plan to you? Yes, and it's time to to, right. to review and, and redo, right. and uh, so that 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 would certainly this would kickstart that in many ways. Okay, it's like, Good. hey, you know, we're we're actually you know moving forward on something. It's it's time to review. What, you know. Okay. Our, our um, now the previous plan was uh, a joint uh, select board, school board, and planning. Committee. Okay, um, I, when I attended the Arb Day conference back in May, um, one of the speakers spoke about management plans for the town of Forest, and their suggestion was to get even more people involved. Um, I was thinking the library, for example. I'd love to have you involved in the town I was on the, previously also on the Faced and Natural Resources Committee, now the oh. Conservation Commission, and so we were charged with it. The town forest there. Yeah. Okay. That that's excellent. Good. Um, so it sounds like, like at like least at the point when, when that management plan was done, the rec committee was not uh, was not active. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, right. so the rec committee would also you know, obviously like right. to be involved. Yeah. In so that's tw twenty ten. So I mean that's that's a ten year plan. Uh, the last time we had any harvest there was back in ninety three. Yeah. And that was small small tree you know, single tree and small area uh, harvest. So we've never really uh, had, a, a, you know, a real full-fledged harvest of timber. Correct. There. So um, that would be I forget what the plan says yeah. about, about that. Um, I know there, it, it is certainly, you know, one of the uses, I don't know uh, right. whether it's like time to, you know, cut everything down. Right, well, now there, no, no, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> No, <laughs> not saying that. Okay, but a uh, selective uh, harvest could, of, of a selective, uh, yeah, right. But okay. but uh, maybe a, a larger scale going to some of the other areas. Right. Uh, the white pine up up on the South Hill. That's something Johnny Summers brought to my attention uh, when they were doing all that logging up there on South Hill. 
Um, and then Ray, Ray Munn approached me on that as well. So, um, you know, as free warden, I've been trying to look, look into some of these things. Um, <clears throat> well, certainly as part of that plan, we, you know, we can have a forester come in and do a review. Right, yeah, I think that's, that, that's exactly what we, we would need. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we coexist with forestry on, on all, almost all of our parcels that we oh, good. Our okay. So this is not like a, oh my God, you know, they're gonna come in and cut down everything. I, right. I was kind of joking when I said that, but yeah, yes. I mean, we work with the Forest Service in the state, um, all the other towns, including the, you know, the Basin, Natural, or, I'm sorry, Basin mm -hmm. Conservation Commission. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's just part of it, you know, and farms too. So mm -hmm. does the do, does the state forestry unit have resources to actually work? Uh, I would not promise anything, anything yeah. from them, um, but we have uh, members who are foresters uh, professionally, okay. and, and mm -hmm. we could maybe tap them for for that. You know, at, at the very least, we may be able to get it much cheaper than we could if we were paying retail um, for it. So that. Um, and then uh, one other thing I, I, I did want to bring up, uh, because you're going to ask at some point, and that's insurance and, uh, and, and liability. Um, the, uh, we're, the member rides are part of a statewide organization, the Vermont Mountain Bike Association, so anything that we do here would be insured. Uh, the liability is extremely low. Um, this is a municipal-owned uh, uh, piece, and it would be very difficult uh, to, to to be able to sue the town for anything that happens there, especially because we're using natural materials um, that are, and if we don't use uh, structural lumber, it becomes even a lower bar of, mm -hmm. of liability. Um, so, you know, those are some things to consider at least, you know, in, in the planning process of, you know, if we, if we decide to use structural lumber, there's a slightly elevated, uh, you know, level of risk, but otherwise it is essentially zero. And I, you know, there has been no successful case of any suing for you know natural surface trail use mm -hmm. in Vermont. Mm -hmm. So okay. okay. Is anyone ever sued for a tick disease or anything like that? No, as far as I know, but we're not I, I don't think we're responsible for that. <laughs> we we may be ultimately responsible for the conditions that have brought them here, but you know, we can yeah. Okay. Um, so and then uh, one one more detail that is super important and that is the October thirty first deadline for the uh, preliminary proposal that needs to go in. Um, and uh, I have a ton of experience doing this and feel that I could do it very fast, um, but you know, mm -hmm. I have other things I need to do, including two other ones I gotta get out of here and take care of. So, so you know, there is, there is some level of, of, of timing on this that we need to you know, be aware of and, and hope, hoping you know, we, can, we can move through the process fast. But um, okay. I don't want to push anybody into any corner that you know, don't feel comfortable in. Okay. All right. Well, just you know, keep us posted. Anything that we, you, know, you need from us? Just, you know. Well, I, what I guess what I need from you guys is permission to, to, you know, to, to you know, apply for this grant and say this is what we're going to do. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and in order to submit that, that pre-proposal, okay. we need that. Okay. Uh, then I make a motion that uh, we allow the rec committee under John Atkinson to go ahead with uh, applying for this grant. Second. Any more discussion? Um, yes, I okay. just one, one question on that. You mentioned that um, field that isn't large enough to be used. Are there any other contenders for the use of that field, or is everybody fine with um, to that Well, place? in the rec committee, we discussed it as, mm -hmm. a, as, a, as a potential mm -hmm. thing, and, and one person did bring up a community garden. Um, uh, you know, and uh, certainly that area could be used as a community garden. Mm -hmm. It's you know raised, essentially, with a little bit of a ditch around it, so it drains well. And, mm -hmm. But it, it might, I mean, are there other places that uh, the community garden might be better? Uh, you know, um, as far as a skills park goes, that's ideal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I certainly don't want to eliminate the idea of a community mm -hmm. garden. I think that that is a great idea. I, you know, I, but I also, you know, think that that's a great spot for something else. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in general, I, I like 
oppose it very much. I'm just wondering if there's anyone if they knew this was happening would say, oh no, we need that spot for. for um, Hopefully, they would have come to you a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so <laughs> if you start the grant process, then people are more aware. Right. Okay, so. Well, I mean, we we will announce that we're applying for it yeah. and, mm -hmm. and share the plans. I, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's part of this. So if, mm -hmm. if that's you know, I mean, I'd, I'd rather you guys see that map too and see the costs mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You know, so you you know what we're getting into. Um, but uh, you know, I certainly right. want to share it with everybody. Right. And if there is some uproar, I, we should well, we should address it. You know, I mean, I I, I think it's quite unlikely. I just right. wouldn't know. You don't know these people. <laughs> 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 Very good. <laughs> no. so, sorry. I have no further questions. Okay, good. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Right. Okay. Well, thank All you. in favor. Okay, thank good. You. Thank you, John. Uh, so, uh, over the next couple of months, we ought to. I will, I will forward this to you guys. Uh, what's the email that I should use to send to all of you? M select board. M select board. You know what? You don't need to write this. Is it on the tab website? It is on the tab website. I'll get it. Under the contact desk. Yeah. Yes. Oh my goodness. They have information on that tab. Right under the right. <laughs> I will find it. Thank you very much for that. And, and, no and likewise on the town, on the forest management, uh, during the winter months would be a good time, I think, to Absolutely. really roll up our sleeves on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because the, the rec committee uh, certainly slows down once, uh, once the snow falls. Right. And I'll Take see you. Pick up once pickleball is done. Do they have fat pickleball now? Or you can do it in the winter? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you did tennis courts. Like you did tennis courts? Yeah. That's our next test. <laughs> and I'll see, I, uh, I'll see about uh, whether you know, the planning commission wants to be involved in it or what, since they, you know, that was kind of their thing before. Okay. Um, so. Well, it, I mean, it, it started out there. Um, right. Right. And then the rec committee came on and then faded a little bit, and then now it's come back much stronger. Right. So. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Super. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. And Corey, I'll, you, have you seen the management plan? No. Okay. No. I will forward you a copy of it. Okay. Okay. Can I take it? The forest management plan? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I have a couple of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Same for you. Thank you. Okay, any other reports and communications or announcements? Sasha, do you have any? I'm reminding you about the Halloween thing that you had a conversation with Sharon about. The what? The Halloween thing. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, so, uh, the, I believe there's going to be a Halloween like, party or whatever here in Northtown, and we're talking about. Maybe putting a. Uh, either, did we talk about getting a, a, town, a, truck, right? a town truck or uh, a fire truck on either side of the village or both sides of the village? Okay. And um, I think it's a good idea. I, I'm leaning towards the town truck, a yellow flashlight versus a, a, a red, you know, like a fire department. Mm -hmm. I think that red is more of an emergency situation where. The down truck is like a warning, right? A warning light. Um, so I guess I just want to run that by the select board and see what your thoughts. No, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. So where would it be positioned? It's uh, I'm not really sure. You know, I would say you know probably down by the town guard to be one, mm -hmm. and you know my. I'd probably say right when it drops to 30 miles yeah. per hour. Mm -hmm. yeah. So just off to the side and flashing? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. You know, probably for, I would say, two hours or whatever, two or three hours. Okay. So yeah, they'll probably involve a little bit of overtime on the road crew, you know, to do that. But I think it's pretty it's, easy it's to worth it. it. Yeah. keep our kids safe. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Do we need a truck for a flashing light? We don't have anything. I I don't know of anything else. Yeah, me, me neither. But the <laughs> yeah, that's I think that's a 
good idea anyway, just to have mm -hmm. big, something yeah. there. Yeah, big. Lots of lights. <laughs> Lots of lights, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. What else? Um, zoning administrator would like to, is asking the town to pay for half of a train that he's interested in going to. He gave me the information if you want to look at it. That? He's going to have to ask for a pay for the other half. Oh, right, right, okay. That's, that's, right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll make the motion that we pay for Sarah. Okay. okay. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. I suppose I should report that I heard from four other people in the town. Similarly, about not one in town hall used for the library, we got a vote. Okay, you mean a, the temporary use? Okay, yes. so this is new. Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Right. Well, otherwise, it would have been with a vote, so that wouldn't have been a comment at all. No, but I meant, right. okay. <laughs> right. I mean, we've heard from a lot of people that said that they didn't write right. their period. Mm -hmm. but, <clears throat> Okay, anybody else? Yeah. Anything? Okay. All right. And I guess the only other thing, and Tom said that we'd be taking this up in the future, was the, uh, the protocols that uh, mm -hmm. Kristen had gotten out to us. Uh, did any, everybody take a look at that? I, I did, and I was struck quite strongly by that. Item G, oh, which is G. considered not typical. Right, right. Um, it, it reads like a gag order. Mm -hmm. And I can't say I'm fond of that. But I'm not sure what I should do about it. Okay. It was um, letter G, is th this is the uh, uh, protocol for HMUSD. Oh, okay. okay. And the Vermont School uh, Board Association's recommendation, recommended protocols, did not have this letter G. Huh. Okay. And that was uh, the G, that was one of the, that was the issue with Kristen when she came in here. Yes. It's like exactly. for that, yeah. that night. And G apparently is short for gag. Yeah. That's a strange wisdom, isn't it? <laughs> so what, are, what, what is our action on this? I have no idea. This, yeah, at, at this point, it's just, yes, I, I would imagine we'll be discussing this at, at a future meeting. So. And fire to the plane. Yeah, right, right. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Ray, anything else to report? No, I, uh, I you had mentioned talking to uh, uh, road crew about the uh, maintenance plan, but I haven't really had a chance. To okay, that's mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's. We okay. might not get to it till the end of the year. The things are going, but okay. we'll talk to at some point. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Callie. Mm -hmm. I heard half of the conversation something about dwellings on property and you can't have more than one dwelling so if someone wanted to put a camp on property they would have to subdivide it to do it and there was some confusion around this and what constitutes a dwelling but yeah. I don't know I right. only heard half the conversation and I wasn't really it wasn't directed at me it was just overhearing yeah or is part it of the conversation dwelling or structure I mean there are definitions, but they're all, all, always not as clear as they could be. Okay. So, <clears throat> what was the context? A complaint seeking information, or 
It was a complaint because I guess there was supposed to be a building permit issued. There's no record of a building permit being issued, but a building permit can't be issued because this camp is considered a dwelling. Okay. So it's what's the difference between a camp and a dwelling mm -hmm. because I know on another road by our house there is a camp that's being used mm -hmm. as a full-time dwelling which it shouldn't be with no E911 address. Mm -hmm. So um, what's but you can't have two dwellings on your property. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just curious what the story is with things that were grandfathered from pre-Irene where any permits would no longer exist. Mm. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I do know, I think there is language mm -hmm. somewhere about when you take a camp and make it into a full-time house that you have to have a building permit. That's what happened with David Van Dusen up there on Lynch Hill. Right. Mm -hmm. We went through right. that and he ended up getting a permit Yeah. with okay. conditions about maintaining the road and, and other things. But mm -hmm. There's definitely, uh, but that that yeah, was that's in the zoning. I think. Yeah, but that wasn't two on one property. That was, that was just, not, yeah. That right. was just going from camp to house. So this would have the additional subdivision <coughs> regulation. Yeah. So I don't know if there's something to think about because if someone has a hundred acres and they want to put a hunting camp on the mm -hmm. other side of their property, they can't do it right now. So I don't know if that's something maybe that needs to go to zoning to look at for what is your clear definition of a dwelling? What do you need to look at? Does there need to be acreage limits? Like if you have five acres, it doesn't make sense. But if you had 50, it may make sense depending on where you are. Right. So I don't know if that's something that either the zoning administrator needs to pass on to DRB or what but i just heard it come up in conversation and do you think the people who brought it up would be likely to go to our zoning administrator to find out that might be a good way yeah that was very uh, i think they've had a conversation and it was not maybe the best conversation so i don't well then, so. then maybe they should get in touch with the planning Okay. Anything else? Jason? No. Okay, I think I've brought up anything that I had. Mm -hmm. uh, so the minutes of 9 3. I wasn't here. No, I was here. No, you were here. Um, I looked back. Did you forward mm -hmm. these to us? It was 9 9, nine I wasn't here. That's right. Because I saw the 9-9, nine, nine. I went all the way down, yeah, and I, right. I couldn't see 9-3. You couldn't? No. No, I, I, this one looks familiar, this there's one too, let's see. Okay, so um, it's Kristen Gahagan. So that's. Might have to. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, oh, that's the other thing I wanted to bring up. Um, uh, actually, while it's on my mind, because you said, where are you? Um, the, um, we were looking to get a numbered paper. Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission has numbers down the side so that, so that you can refer on each page to, to a specific line and then it's really easy to find something. So that would be really neat if, if we had stationery out there. Um, 
Let's see. So down under public comment, um, one, two, three, four, five. Stop. Starting on the fifth line at the end, Kristen Hagen, House Road. Mm -hmm. It's Gehagen. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's, it's G E O, but you might want to just, just check the spelling with Charlotte or something. <clears throat> and so she should be added to the guest list as well. That's all I remember saying about that. Did I? Do you remember that? said at that time that this is different from what she said today because she said that they, today she said that they have about 6,000 books total in the collection. Yeah, I, I caught yeah. that. So, she did say 6,000 that night because I mm -hmm. remember that being the number. But I thought that was a lot of books. Yeah, that seems to be all they have. That's right. Did you hear back from Dan Carrier regarding the road tracking system? Yes. He suggested coming in in October to a meeting to talk more about it. Excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Have you met a fire in the basement before? I, I thought we did. I thought we did too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, we should definitely look into that issue. And actually, just a, a humidity gauge, too, just to yeah. see what the humidity level yeah. is down there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Does anybody know if there were inexpensive recording humidity gauges these days? Because now it can be to memory rather than to paper? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I'd like to look that up. So 
a good question about the concrete work at the town hall. Would it be less expensive in some areas to put down flagstones to redirect water than to pour concrete? What, what we're thinking of is in front of the side door, because that's where the problem is, because mm -hmm. the road is too high. Mm -hmm. The town hall is too low. One of the other. <laughs> Either way, there's only about a two to three inch clearance, and so it doesn't take a lot of ice right. to build up and go over the sill. Mm -hmm. So what I was thinking about was uh, lowering that grade around six to eight inches and putting some sort of grate in there. There's already a drain pipe in there, right? maybe a trench drain of some sort that would mm -hmm. fit across there, collect all the water, and people could still walk across there and have it in, you know, in concrete. So uh, try to keep that mm. water from going over the sill, which is, I think, a good part of the problem. So Makes sense. I think it'd be pretty easy. I don't know why we haven't thought about it before. But, uh, you know, it, it probably would be three to four thousand mm dollars. -hmm. But we should, we should do it regardless if the library moves or not. Exactly. We should do something about that back door. So I make a motion to approve the plate board meeting minutes of 9-3 as amended. I'll second. Any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. And I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of 9-9. A second. Any discussion on those? All in favor? All in favor, say aye. 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 survey file prior to 4-1-2019, and we've approved it. So are we all supposed to sign this, or is it just the chairman sign? Uh, looks yeah, like... Uh, just the chair. Oh, okay. Down. I'll sign the second copy.
Do I get to take my cake with me? Yes, I was just thinking that. I think Tom or Tom's wife made it for you. Very nice. Oh, you want this? I'm not bringing this in. I'm trying to make sure it gets home. I don't know if I'm getting hungry. Anything else? Okay, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay.